Hello everybody, it is Dr. Zwirling here for another genetics video. Unlike my last video about genetics, I am doing this in Minecraft rather than in real life. So, let's get started. Okay, well, let's go into Zwirling Laboratories, like the name. Here we have our innocent test subjects. Oh, I killed some of them. Whoops, clumsy me. Anyway, today in this video, um, we are going to be talking about the types of genetics known as Mendelian genetics and non-Mendelian genetics, along with sex-limited, um, sex-limited, uh, whatchamacallit, sex-limited Traits. There we go. Alright, so here we've got subject one. Um, let me quickly grab this. And here we have subject two. Subject two is purple. Okay. In Mendelian genetics, when we breed them, since, um, since purple is a dominant trait, and white is recessive since they're heterozygous that means that they will become perp that the uh, offspring will most like since let's say that this is a homozygous dominant allele that means that and this guy is a homozygous recessive that means that 100 percent of the time this guy right here is gonna come out purple now if he's heterozygous the purple guy the big mom purple guy is heterozygous, then that means that 75% of the time, um, there's going to be a purple baby and, um, and, uh, uh, 25% of the time it's going to be white, like this guy. So now, sorry subjects, um, now, let's take another example where we have two homozygous ones. In this case, they're both going to be purple. When we breed them, boom, out comes a, um, out comes a, uh, purple guy. So let's say this guy is heterozygous and you are heterozygous. That means that there is a, um, if they're both heterozygous, that means that there is a, quickly, quickly, Panette squares, Panette squares. There's a 75% chance that this guy's going to come out purple and 25% chance that the, he's going to come out white. Um, if they're both homozygous, or, um, they're both, or one of them is heterozygous, and the other one is homozygous dominant, then that means that 100% of the time they're gonna have a purple one. Thank you guys so much for partic participating in this test. Um, we don't need you anymore. Alright, next up we're gonna move into our non-Mendelian traits. That was Mendelian genetics. This is non-Mendelian genetics. And this first thing that we're gonna talk about non-Mendelian genetics is incomplete dominance. So, right here, we've got... Papa, Mama. Now Papa is um. Hey, hey, hey! Don't, don't go out there! Don't go out there! Nope, nope, nope! You guys cannot come out there. No, stay in. Uh, stay in there. Stay in there. Come over here. I have weeds. One. Okay, you're gonna come this way. One second, guys. I'm sorry. Alright, I'm back, everyone. Sorry for that. So, here, we've got two different things. In this case, the purple is going to be the dominant trait, and the orange is gonna be the recessive trait. Um, so, in incomplete dominance, here's the thing. Is that with incomplete dominance, when the, um, when the... When the dominant trait and the um, recessive trait are both in one, so that means they're heteros it's a heterozygous allele, the dominant trait isn't fully expressed, causing something in between the two colors to form. So in this case, even though this is like, it's not really working, like you don't blend orange and um, purple together to get pink, um, we'll, we'll just pretend, we'll, we'll, we'll pretend that this is like white and this is like red. Um, when this is blended in, when red is around, um, when... Clearly, they created a, um, a heterozygous, um, baby. So, they choose the heterozygous genotype, which then, when that big R was next to the little r, it created something in between, which in this case is pink. So, basically, an incomplete dominance, um, there are, 
the dominant trait isn't fully expressed when the um, recessive trait is around, causing something in between to be created. Okay, over here, we're going to go into the second of three non-Mendelian traits, also known as codominance. So, right here in this corner, we've got a brown horse. Let's pretend that there isn't any white there on his feet. So, we've got a brown horse. This is the mother. Then we've got a um, father, which is the white horse. In, um, in codominance, they basically, they, um, the mother and the father both co-dominate together. Basically meaning that they create something where they're both dominant traits, so they'll create, or like the recessive will be, the recessive and the um, dominant trait will go together and they will create a speckled version, kind of like, more, or like a, um, where they, there will be both things in there. So in a Panent square, if you had like um, a homozygous RR and a homozygous little r, little r, the little r's would be like, or, oh, let me restart. I'll go over this in review also so that you guys understand this, but if you have two big R's and two big D's, R's represent brown, D's represent white, and then you get, they'll, it'll always be heterozygous, and so, but since they're both dominant, um, it'll come out like R, capital R, capital D, which will then create something in, it's not rather in between, it's more of, there's two versions of each. So, They've got the white person and the white horse and the brown horse, and that will create a brown and white horse. Okay? If that doesn't make any sense to you, that's okay. I'm going to go over in the review thing on a separate thing with the Panunt square so you guys can actually see it. Alright, now on to our final thing called about Mendelian traits, also known as sex-limited traits. So, if we go over here... Oh, don't want to go that way. Now, this is going to be a really, really bad example, but I don't think this is going to be on any of the tests. Um, so, sex-limited traits basically mean that um, both genders have the, uh, have the um, trait. It's just they're not, in some cases, the phenotype isn't fully expressed. So, here we've got a man. Um, we'll like, put bedrock there so you can... So, here we've got a man. It does not look like anything like a man. Understand. He's got, since it's Movember, he grew out his beard. It's really, really big. It's a really big beard. Okay? Here we have a woman. She also has the genotype to have a beard. Means, like, most ladies, you all have the genotype to have a beard. It's true. Um, except, and with this thing, the phenotype, though, isn't expressed fully. Instead, instead of having, like, excessive amount of facial hair, the females have a slight amount. They don't have the full phenotype. So, in this case, she has the genotype of B. She has, like, a dominant BB, let's just say, to have a beard. But the phenotype, because of her sex, um, I, I still... This is a really confusing topic for me, too. Um, I, I didn't fully understand it at first. But, basically, what I understand is the female has the trait to be have a beard. All girls have the trait to have a beard, unless otherwise, like, it's a really rare chance that you don't, or something like that. And then, in most cases, um, the girls will only have a slight amount of facial hair, like a small amount of stubble, or stuff like that, that's not really visible, but it's still there. Um, and then, with male men, or males, um, they have the genotype and the phenotype is fully expressed, um, having either stubble if they shave, or, um, real, um, beards, um, if they don't shave, um, which is kind of gross, um, so, yeah, uh, let me see, there's one other part about that, um, yes, if you've heard, I mean, I know some of you have heard of, like, bearded ladies in the circus and stuff like that, that would just mean that they have the genotype and, they have a, the they had the rare chance that um the uh the phenotype was fully expressed so yeah um there will be review in a few seconds um and yeah so um just want to go through a few things for normal people that aren't in our homeroom one science class please like and subscribe the usual um yeah so and I'm back here. So for here, right on this square right here, we have Mendelian genetics. Okay. So in this Mendelian genetics, we've got ourselves a um, RR, 
So we've got two homozygous, I mean heterozygous uh, animals. Um, in this case, they're like the sheep. So for this, we're going to fill the put down square in like that, like that, because we're crossing these, the top and the bottom together. So in this case, we're going to cross this big R with that, and this little R with that, and the dominant always comes first, and then in this case, like that. So in Mendelian genetics, with all the, with these three right here, the all the ones that have a big R in them, they're all going to come out red, because red is the dominant trait. Now, with this here, it's going to come out white, because white is the recessive trait. So, right now, red, there is a 75% um, chance that the offspring of these two parents will come out with a, um, with a red, um, with red offspring, and then here is a 25% chance. Now, for incomplete dominance, with, this is where the dominant trait is not fully expressed when the um, recessive trait is round. So in this case, we have R, 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 and R, R. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and shade these things real quick. Um, what they're going to be like. So that's going to be... Basically... Yeah, so basically here's what's going to go along. So red, there's a 25% it's going to be red, okay? I'll explain this in a second. There is a 50% chance it's going to be pink. Green is going to represent pink. And there is a 25% chance that the offspring is going to be white. Now, in here, basically this, there's both dominant traits, which therefore means that the offspring will, have, will come out red. Now, here, normally, in Mendelian genetics over here, it will come out red also because there's a dominant trait there. There's dominant the dominant um, alleles are, but in this case in incomplete dominance the uh, the um, dominant trait is not fully expressed or does not feel comfortable, which means it's not going to be fully expressed when the recessive trait is there. So in both of these cases, there's a um, recessive and a dominant trait, which then creates a, um, a heterozygous allele, and then in incomplete dominance that means when it's a heterozygous, then it means that they will come out with something in between both the dominant and the recessive um, colors. And then, as usual, to recessive, it's going to be um, it's going to be white. For a final one with codominance, um, in codominance, it means that the um, the two traits kind of codominate together. So in this case, we have red and white. We'll change this to W. Um, it's going to come out like this. RW, 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 and RW, which means that there's a 100% chance that it's going to come out red and white speckled, we'll say. Um, there's a video by the Amoeba Sisters that we watched in, um, in class, and so where they talked about the speckled chickens, who would, their crosses would create a combination not a mixture, not like a um, something in between, but a combination of all of the traits, which therefore creates red and white speckled, or red and white striped, black and white striped, and so on and so forth, by having these two codominating together. But um, anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. Um, I hope you guys learned something about it, um, or review for Homer 1 and stuff like that. If you're one of those random people that subscribe to my channel, I hope you learned something about incomplete dominance and Mendelian traits and stuff like that. Um, I really hope you guys enjoy this video. Um, please like and subscribe down below. Thank you guys so much. And, yeah, goodbye. Thanks. Hello, everyone. It's Ian again here. Um, I, know, I wonder if any of you guys noticed, but um, this is actually a video. I had some problem with the editing and everything. I, um... I forgot to edit my video, so I had to replay it and re-record it. Um, so, anyway, I was not cheating. I promise you, I was not cheating. Um, just want to know, this was an example of artificial evolution in the Minecraft thing, because I was artificially breeding stuff like that, kind of. So, awesome vocabulary word. Um, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. And I already explained it in this video over here, so thanks.